this chat window thing. There's Brogue. Brogue, yes, you're, yes, I'm live. How are you, ma'am? Hey, Danny. All right. messing around with the uh, the polymorph in Syntronic. This is based on the polymog. This is like the, the famous Vox Humana sound. Um, this was like a mid 70s attempt at making like a, you know, human voice patch. <laughs> hey, there's Sal Lucido. Hi, Sal. I know him. Right. Let's load up something else. So uh, I mentioned in the in the demo, um, this is the Syntronic browser, and uh, it's it's the same as the Sample Tank Four browser, basically. So you can pick. Uh, the synth here on the left. And then, uh, of course, you've got your cat category, timbre, style, musical genre, and mood. And then my favorite is this little star, which is the favorites thing, because there's, you know, 2,000 plus presets in Syntronic and I think something like 8,000 in Sample Tank 4. And how do you possibly keep track of all that? Hey, Manuela Montesante. He is an awesome keyboard player. Ciao, Manuela. Hi, Michael. There's another one. Hope I'm keeping track of all this. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, oh, that's my mom calling. It really is my mom calling. Look. All right, I'm not going to answer. Um, so, like I said, the, uh, I'm using the favorites here. And basically, um, you know, I have about... What is this, like maybe 30 favorites across all of the synths. And then when I'm working on a session or something, um, I can just, you know, click this magic favorite star and, uh, you know, just load up what I think are the best presets in Syntronic. You might uh, feel differently, but these are the ones I like. So let's load up a few more. Here's Analog Choir. This is from the Alesis Andromeda. In fact, it's from that exact Alesis Andromeda right there. That one's been around the world a couple times, maybe more than a couple times. <laughs> I should check out um, Manuela's um, demos. I believe he did demos for, I think it was Sample Tank 4. Um, he's just an awesome keyboard player and uh, I was really happy to see those. I met Manuela at uh, a NAMM show, I don't know if it was this year or the previous year, but uh, he did some great stuff for us. Okay, bro, am I saying, is it supposed to be bro? Am I saying that right? Bro, is he Scottish? I don't know. What are my preferred sounds? Um, geez, that's a good question. Um, let's see, for, for a lead sound, you know, it, it should be, bro, okay, good, thank you, thanks for the confirmation. 
Um, for a lead sound, it should be you know something that's punchy and and, and present, and that uh, isn't isn't too soupy and, and gets lost. Um, I can show you actually. There's uh, one of my favorites here. It's called Absolute Lead. This is a sample of the Minimoog Voyager actually. So it's um, it's it's really punchy. It's really present. You know, it's something that definitely will like stand out in front of a mix. But you know, it has some dimension to it. Uh, there's some filtered delay and all of that, um, and a little bit of reverb. It also has some movement in it. That's without me adding vibrato or anything. But you know, the filter opens up and just moves a little bit, and the detuning rolls around. If you think about, you know, a violin or a lead guitar, you know, that's never a static sound. You know, a guitar player, you know, bends a note and the timbre is constantly changing and feeding back with the amp a little bit and all that. Um, and I like that in, in synth sounds as well. To me, the, the sound should be organic and alive and like a human is, is playing it. And, you know, I guess, you know, that, that applies to pad sounds too. Um, you know, what's a nice moving pad sound. Um, let's do this one. This is from the Memory Moog. Memory M, Memory V in Syntronic. I have to remember all the names. movement from you know the envelopes and the LFOs and we actually have two filters going on there. Let's see. Oh there's a link to Manuela's demos. Great. Awesome. Please everybody check that out. Bro is messing around with CS for iPad. Excellent. That's cool. Yeah you know um, the recent IK apps like from, from the last you know four years or so uh, probably starting with Syntronic although Ryan can correct me if uh, I'm wrong here. Um, the way we've been building them, it makes it very easy to port them um, both to Mac PC and to iOS. So um, Syntronic on the iPad works exactly the same way that, that Syntronic on Mac and PC works. Uh, it's, it's the same code, the same application, uh, the same exact functionality. So you know, the modeled filters are the same. Uh, I mentioned in the demo, you know, we have M-type based on the Bob Moog transistor ladder filter. The R-type based on the, uh, what is it, uh, Roland IR, I think it's 3109. Am I getting the number right? Uh, the C-type based on the Curtis, I forget the, the number, but the CE, famous Curtis chip um, that's in, what is it, it's in the Prophet? Oh, it's in the Memory Moog. Actually, no, I'm sorry. The Memory Moog has, uh, I believe, discrete filters and sampled up, and a uh, and chip-based oscillators. I got to get that right. Uh, the O-type is uh, based on the Oberheim SEM, the synthesizer expander module. So this is all in um, in the iPad version and in the desktop version and the iPhone version, actually. So um, you know, you're not really limited by the platform. And that's that's the same with um, Hammond B3X, which is one of the newer ones we released. Um, and it's it's pretty cool just to not have that limitation. All right, what else can I tell you guys? Go back to favorites here. Ah, exchange patches between the iPad and the PC Mac version. Um, you know what? You can't at the moment. Um, you can in Hammond V3X. In fact, our, our friend Jordan Rudess uh, did a gig with Deep Purple uh, right before the, the pandemic really hit. And we actually added that functionality to um, Hammond B3X for that reason, because we were doing the voicing on a computer, but he wanted to do the gig on an iPad. And so um, we, we made a system where you could exchange um, presets. Um, we will do that for, for Centronic at some point. We haven't done it yet. But that's a good question. Here's a cool Taurus pedal. Bully, rather. Whoops, wait, did I load it? 
I didn't load it. So that's a pretty over the top, huge sound. <laughs> you wonder, bass pedal, bass pedal six oscillator stereo sweep. How can you do six oscillators on, on Taurus pedals? Well, someone like me that's kind of obsessive about this stuff, I just multi-tracked it. So I recorded, uh, uh, you know, an in tune version uh, in the middle with two oscillators, then slightly flat on the left with two oscillators, slightly sharp on the right with two oscillators all playing the same patch, and that's how you get the stereo sweep. Okay. Bro says you can't do that with Amplitube. I'll that's not my department, but uh, I'll bet you you will be able to soon. I think they're, they're working on something like that. Okay, and Ryan says start wrapping it up because the next video is going to start. Everybody uh, say thank you to Ryan Swanick. He's been... Um, kind of producing this whole thing and running it behind the scenes and doing tech support for people like me that are not very good at the streaming thing. Right on, Ryan. Okay. Uh, oh, wait. He says, I have some extra time. Okay. Andrew Birch says, thanks, Ryan. Right on, Ryan. Skies Watcher, right on. Somebody's a Genesis fan. Okay. CK, awesome. Okay, it looks like I have a couple more minutes, so let me know if I can tell you anything else. Here's another uh, sweep from the Andromeda. This is my keyboard. <laughs> So um, some of you guys might know, I, I was one of the uh, designers of, of the Alesis Andromeda back in the, in the late 90s. And another one of the uh, designers and the guy who was actually the product manager who took it through to manufacturing was a fellow named Taiho Yamada. And um, Taiho um, now has a company called Media Overkill, and they have a cool product called Wave Razor. Um, and Taiho worked for M Audio before that. And... Um, uh, Anyway, we brought in Taiho to help do some voicing on the Galaxy. We thought, okay, well, you know, we've got me from the original team. Let's let's get some other people. And so um, Taiho wrote a bunch of great um, presets for the Galaxy, like this one. And you can recognize any of Taiho's presets because he named them all after Galaxies. <laughs> so we called the synth Galaxy. And so Taiho's got a great sense of humor. And uh, so all of his... Galaxy presets are named after galaxies. All right. Okay. This is from the VCF3. Hi, Peter. Who's Peter? I don't know. Are we talking about Peter Toriello? I don't know. Peter's cool. If I play more than three notes, I'll get in trouble. Let's see. Here's some a little more edgy sounds. Peter's here too. Where's Peter? I don't see Peter. I don't know. Oh, maybe he's on YouTube. Oh, there he is. He texts me. Okay. Say hi to Peter and thank Peter. Peter is also awesome. Okay, so what are, we, what are we doing with this preset? So for this one, we have this kind of edgy um, uh, FM, analog FM modulation uh, multi-sample. And then um, I'm modulating uh, the filter with a random LFO. And it's beat synced. 
So uh, default for the standalone application is 120 beats per minute. So now you have this kind of like, kind of gnarly, edgy, uh, analog FM sound, and then it's being modulated. Uh, the filter of that is being modulated uh, by the random LFL. So if I made that like, I don't know, like a square wave LFO. So you can see what the LFO is doing there. Sawtooth wave. Uh, we're beat synced, but here, let me slow it down. Make it not beat synced and slow it down. All right. Joe Brown, that sounds just like a cold solder joint. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Sal, what do you suggest is the basic setup? Well, download, uh, there's a free version of Syntronic. So download it on your Mac or PC uh, or on your iPad and, and check it out. Um, and if you like it, uh, you know, get the app uh, on, on the iPad or on, on Mac or PC. They, they sound the same. Simon, is there a real favorite one out there? I don't know. I like them all. It's like asking you which is your favorite child or something. No. Um, I mean, I like this absolute lead a lot when I'm, when I'm uh, you know, doing sessions of my own. This is a, you know, a really great go-to sound. I mean, that really sounds like an analog synth to me. Danny, Sam. All right. Sam is a great synth. That's based on the Oberheim SEM, this one right here. Have I picked any favorites from that? I haven't. That's really rude. All right. I'm going to have to change that. Let's load up a couple things. So, um, Simon, check this out. So this is a this is a sample of a high pass filter sweep on on the actual SEM. So I sampled um, a resonant high pass filter sweep in stereo. I, I used two SEMs and then recorded them at the same time. So it's it's samples of a high pass filter sweep, but then I'm actually using. Uh, the low pass filter in Syntronic, like to filter it down a little further. So that's pretty cool. And I, I, I've done that with, um, with a lot of the synths in Syntronic. This lets us use like, you know, basically two or three filters at, at once. How wonky can the oscillator drift get? Um, it can get pretty extreme. Um, we don't give you a lot of control over that because we don't want it to sound broken, but, um, uh, especially in, in sample tank four, uh, you can set the drift like really far to the point where it sounds like, oh man, I need to take this synth in to get fixed. <laughs> Simon, those filters do a really good job. Thank you. Yeah, I think so too. The, uh, the guys that do the modeling at, at IK are just, you know, these ridiculous super geniuses. And when we were modeling the filters, you know, they'd say, okay, Eric, I need a, you know, here's a, here's a, uh, you know, a certain kind of white noise file. I want you to run this through the filter and, you know, send us this and send us this and do this and do this and, you know, take it at this point and give us this measurement and this measurement. I'm like, okay, so I'm just sending them, you know, all these crazy things. And then this is the result. We just have, you know, these awesome modeled filters. DCO? Okay. Henrik. Henrik, are you Swedish? Looks like a Swedish name. Could you show an example? Yes. Creating a sound on the DCOX using a basic timbre. For sure. So let's go up to DCOX. Uh, I had a favorite in these. Here we go. Bode Soft Sweet Pad. Uh, 
Okay, so... Um, pretty typical JX10 sounding thing. All right, uh, so let's take all of the all of the um, programming off. So phase performance off. Okay, so there's no filter now. Uh, there is get rid of all the vibrato. No, nothing there. Portamento, vibrate, oscillator, detune. Let's get rid of all that. Oh, oscillator 2 off. Okay. Phantom 80, that does really sound good. Thank you. Very Vangelis, yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so here's the basic sound. Let's see, it may not be all that different. Let me, I don't know if I remember this one. <laughs> It's louder because there's no filtering. So let me bring this down just a little. Okay, so. So that's the basic sampled sound. Uh, there's no, yeah, there's nothing going on with the Amp envelope. Oh, there is a little bit of velocity. Okay, so let me get rid of the velocity. Although, um, as you guys probably know, the uh, JX10, JX8, P, MKS70, those all are velocity sensitive synths. Okay, the filter's off. So yeah, it has that beautiful slow um, envelope in the sample itself. Henrik, yes, absolutely. So if I wanted to filter this, let's say, okay, let's put it through the M type, like the uh, Bob Moog transistor ladder filter, amount, full amount, which actually scales back the cutoff frequency. And then I'll give it a real slow attack and then kind of a slow decay and then down to zero. Resonance is pretty good. Okay, so. So I'm basically adding that, that Bob Moog uh, ladder filter on top of the sampled sound to give it just a little more animation. I can also do that with an LFO. So let's, okay, now the, now the envelope is not modulating it at all, but now the LFO will. What is it like for CPU usage? Actually, it's um, it's pretty light on the CPU, and that's because we're using sampled oscillators. So it's not like um, the the processor has to generate, um, you know, a, a a continuous oscillator. So um, the filtering is is you know the thing that takes up a lot of uh, the DSP power and the effects. So uh, I think I mentioned in the demo, we've got this cool like 500 series effects rack. Um, and so if I was to stack up, you know, five CSR hall reverbs, okay, that's gonna hit it just like if you did that in your DAW, if you put five reverbs on a, on a channel, but you're, you know, probably not gonna do that. Okay, I always lower the cutoff and then get confused when I change the amount. Yeah, um, this is an interesting thing, Henrik, about, um, Syntronic. It's based on uh, the Sample Tank 3 engine because uh, Syntronic was actually made before Sample Tank 4. And the way uh, Sample Tank worked all the way up through that is 
uh, the filter, the envelope amount actually scales how much of, of the cutoff frequency range is going to be controlled by the filter rather than like the traditional additive, I mean, a subtractive synth technology where a filter envelope would just add to the cutoff frequency. Um, I actually made a video about that like a few years ago. So um, check that out on, on YouTube and it, it explains it a little better. Um, now I will say in Sample Tank 4, we changed that. Now, in, so in Sample Tank 4, it works more like a, a, a traditional subtractive synthesizer where when you add filter envelope, it just raises the, the cutoff frequency. Um, but anyway, yeah, check out that, that, um, that little uh, YouTube tutorial. It, it's pretty short, I think. Okay, bro wants to hear some lead sounds. Yeah, let's hear some lead sounds. Oh, you know what? What if I say synth lead? Hey. Uh, synth lead. Okay. Play too bigger on the inside. Now, you know, you can leave the browser open while you're just browsing through sounds. <laughs> That's a pretty simple, like, analog sine and triangle wave sound. Let's, uh, let's find a few more. I'm looking for my favorites, of course. Oh, here we go. This is a great one. This is from the Prophet 5. Actually, I think this is from the Prophet 10. Same sound, of course. <laughs> Sorry if my phrasing's a little funny. I, I'm, I'm monitoring this through the, uh, the OBS streaming thing. So there's, you can set Centronic to have no perceivable um, latency, but I'm hearing like a half second delay with the, the streaming system. So if my phrasing's a little goofy, forgive me. <laughs> So that's the famous, you know, Prophet 5 sync lead sound. Um, you, you know, you hear that on, uh, oh man, a lot of 80s hits and uh, that kind of thing. FM filter phase lead. Okay, this is the Noir. This is from the uh, Multimog. What else? You can see I like to stick to my favorites. Where's, uh, oh, that must not be tagged as a lead. Here, let's go to my favorites here. Oh, I, this is not really a lead, but, and I, I think I played this in the demo too, but this is just so good. This might be my favorite preset in Centronic, and you have to play an E, E0. <laughs> Yeah, and as someone who, who has an OBXA, in fact, that OBXA that, that, that uh, we sampled, I have an OBXA, an OBX, an OBA to Matrix 12. Um, that sound is just so satisfying to play. And when, um, when we captured it for Centronic, I had, you know, uh, the computer and the hardware synth right next to each other and made sure it just sounded, you know, exactly correct. Yes, Joe Brown, you win the award. <laughs> Okay, let's see, Henrik. I was wondering if you have plans to bring Centronic into the ST4 engine. It would make sound design having a da, 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 da. yes. Um, that is a great question, and uh, you know we're always looking, uh, you know, to to take the software to the next level, and we're actually looking into that uh, right now. We're trying to figure out an elegant way to do it where we, you know, preserve everything that we have in the current version of Centronic, and then add uh, the Sample Tank 4 stuff to it as well. Um, you can check out the Spaceport 77 uh, library for Sample Tank 4. That's, that's a more recent library, and that's all built on uh, Sample Tank 4. So that's using uh, the Oberheim OB1 
as its main sound source. Um, so it's the OB-1 and the Yamaha CP-30. It's like kind of a play on Star Wars. So we released it right before the last Star Wars movie. So uh, you have OB-1 and CP-30. All right. It's not quite OB-1 and C-3PO, but, you know, we get in trouble for copyright violation. I'm probably going to get in trouble just for saying that now. All right. Okay. Two-minute warning. Cool. All right. All right. Let me answer some, some more questions. Okay. Andrew, yeah, you got the reference, too. All right. Let me... Uh, Play some more leads. Oh yeah, this is a cool one. I think I, I used this in the demo earlier, but So I went a little conservative with the effects on this one, but if you want to make it, you know, if you want to do the full Blade Runner Vangelis thing, a little more echo, a little more reverb. Maybe a little more reverb, maybe a little darker reverb, I would say. Probably hit the limiter a little harder too, why not? All right. Michael Michaels picked up Spaceport the other day, haven't played with it, but demos sound good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really proud of that one. All right. Andrew, lots of hard work. Sounds great. Thank you guys. Yes, big bro, it is indeed freedom, especially when you have it on your iPad. You know, just imagine you know, having 44 hardware synths, you know, really well voiced and sounding like the uh, originals. Okay, I've got to say goodbye. Mike Z, is it possible to make layers? Yes, you have A, B, C, and D, so you can layer up to four, and each one you can set the range, key range, note range, and all that. Okay, one of you need SD4 to... Uh, yes, Henrik, you can. On the Hitmaker series, you can sync uh, the LFO um, to run in sync. Uh, you go on the edit page and, and you just hit, I think it's actually, I have, I gotta go guys. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, don't be afraid to put in a, a ticket with our support team with, with Ryan who's here and, and uh, any of the other guys that we have an awesome support team. They're all musicians and just cool guys and they will not leave you hanging. So thanks so much and we'll see you next time.